everyone, and welcome to another episode of Good Time Gal. I'm your host, Caitlin Palufo. Thank you so much for tuning in. This week, oh, we got a fun one. Uh, Mehran Kilgani is on this week's episode. He is fantastic. We do a lot of storytelling. He is very fun, very good at talking shit. So I had to do a little bit of editing, but don't worry. I left some good bits in there. Please enjoy. Um, if you want to f- follow Mehran, you can follow him on Instagram at they, the Mehran, T-H-E-M-E-H-R-A-N on Instagram and Twitter. He's a delight. I love him. He's one of my favorite people in the world. You'll see why. Um, and please, uh, if you have a second, please follow the pod at Good Time Gal Pod on Instagram and write a review, subscribe, tell a friend about the podcast if you're enjoying it. It helps us a lot. And oh boy, mama could use some help, mostly mentally, but you know, podcast help can't hurt. So please. And then if you want to follow me, I'm at Caitlin Palufo on Instagram and Twitter. Um, that would also be terrific, wonderful, lovely, everything above. But mostly, thank you so much for listening to the pod, and let's get to it. Please enjoy this episode of Good Time Gal. Woke up to a mystery. <laughs> like, literally, <laughs> like, what the fuck happened? How what ma- the wait, fuck you happened? had two and a half bottles of wine. Two and, and three an quarters, yeah, yeah. Two and three quarters, very yeah. precise. Yeah, well... It mattered, I think. <laughs> I think that I think that last point two five yeah. bottle of rose. I think it I think it tipped the scales against my favor. <laughs> and uh <laughs> and like at one point like uh, apparently at some point I went on Facebook and I was like, Oh, I'm going to be really bad tomorrow. <laughs> Don't remember that. Don't remember this was crazy. Uh a desk lamp in the office underneath our loft bed uh-huh. was on. And I was like, what the fuck was I doing down there? (laughs) I find framed pictures of my family and childhood, which (laughs) means it took a dark turn indeed. And then I was like, well, at least I'll charge the batteries. All the batteries were in the charger. (laughs) I did something incredibly responsible. There was a shelf building kit on the dining room table. I was like, what fucking shelf? Would I, I would have, I would have destroyed myself and the walls. (laughs) I wasn't in a place to build shelves. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to take an Ambient and become a property brother. Yeah. <laughs> and th- I think the scariest part was checking social media. I'm yeah. always worried that it's just like, uh, one day I'm just going to snap and fucking t- talk about it. Well, I feel like you, people already expect that from you. Is that? Do you think that's true? Yeah. So okay. whenever you go on social media and you just go off, yeah. it's like, yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> ah, it's not healthy. <laughs> no, it's good. It's not healthy. You're Honestly, an open I'm, book. I am just shooting myself in the foot left, right, and center. <laughs> that's all I do. It's all I know how to do. What are you going to do? Run for president? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I could. <laughs> I, I have a cleaner record than these motherfuckers running for president. Like I've never I never went on record and said that I didn't want my kids to grow up in an or in a racial jungle. Who said that? Joe Biden said that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't pretend I was Native American <laughs> and call myself the first person of color tenured professor at Harvard Law. Elizabeth Warren did that. <laughs> like I've I've done a lot of fucked up things in my life, but not n- nothing on scale as like, <laughs> you know, as co-opting a race. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then running for president of a country on the stolen land of that race. I've never done anything that fucked up. <laughs> you know, have I slapped a comic or two? You betcha. <laughs> have I open hand wailed on someone? Yup. I want to know that story. Oh, what was it? Who that's did a- you beat? So I had to have this surgery because I'm super diabetic. Okay. And... um. I, I was morbidly diabetic. Like I was, I my blood sugar, despite being on five times the natural, the mm-hmm. not natural, but the, the normal amount of insulin that diabetics are given, I was on five times that. Oh, wow. My blood sugar was still hovering in the 500s, mm-hmm. which 600 is coma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I was... I was in a very bad way. Okay. And then they had to rewire my guts so my body became malabsorptive to sugars. Okay. They tell you that when they do this, that for about six months to a year, your hormones are going to go absolutely fucking crazy, and you need to keep an eye, like you need to keep an eye on it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It's it, they they just warn you. All they can do is warn you. They're like it will with a probability of one you will go nuts. Yes. So it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Good luck. Stay off of Facebook. <laughs> you should have stayed off of Facebook. <laughs> is what they But Ryan, I, you just don't listen. They should have said that. That should they should have said cool it with the social media for a minute. <laughs> and like and also there it like there's a period of rapid weight loss right after the surgery. Mm-hmm. So uh, because your body, like literally, you're not absorbing fats or sugars. Okay. So. Do you have to eat something special in that? Yeah, I mean the the protein shakes I drink. Oh, okay. Every day. So that my coffee is half protein shake. Oh. Oh, I remember this. Have you ever tasted it? No. It's actually like You've fucking made delicious. Me taste it's fucking. It before. Have I? Oh, yeah. you bitch! <laughs> Don't just nod at me. That is so fucking. You sick. did when we were in Atlantic when we were in City. Atlantic City, you which is another <laughs> example of ver of like wildly bad behavior. <laughs> Uh huh. Go on. Yeah, but you weren't alone. So what happened with you th- with the di- diabetes? Right. So then I someone. I ended up in Boston to do like a little over an hour or something, and there was this like very sweet, unassuming, younger comic in the green room, and I was like I was mortally pissed. Yeah. Uh. At life or at her? Or no, at th- it was like my home club. And th- this is going to sound so petty, and I'm just being honest, that he they had like a wall of like of like alums. Mm-hmm. And they tried to tell me that it was people who donated, but it wasn't all people who donated to like fix the place. And they never asked me for money. And I married good money. Yeah. I could have, if they needed money, they could have had my money. Yeah. So uh, it was just... Um, I, I was like, I was butt hurt. Mm-hmm. I was emotional. And there was this like newer comic and I was like, don't look at me. And he looked at me and I <laughs> fucking swung. <laughs> and s- it's the hardest I've ever slapped anyone. And I, and I swear to God, it comes from a Bugs Bunny place in me. It's not like a, I'm not actually Joan Crawford. I think it's hysterical to pretend you're Joan Crawford every now and again. But I, do, I am not actually Joan Crawford. <laughs> but I had had this surgery. I was hormonally insane. And I and a lot of times I don't know my own strength. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I fucking knocked this kid's head off. Like, I hit him so crazily. And then now, because the kids are all sensitive, this one bitch in that city, who wasn't even there, uh-huh. was like, Mehran assaulted you. You should call the police. <laughs> so then like the next day while I was with a prostitute in a hotel room <laughs> I, I started to get texts that were like Miron you're like you might get a visit by the cops today because you fucking and I mean objectively I did assault this kid yes but again <laughs> hit him I hit the, the shit out of this kid <laughs> And like, and here's the thing: is that like he's actually he was a good young comic. Uh huh. Like he's, th- there are thousands of people I should have. I if I were to actually slap the shit out of someone, yeah, thousands of people ahead of this kid on the list. Yeah, he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, and I thought it was going to be hysterical, <laughs> and everyone was like, oh. <laughs> like instead, everyone was. <laughs> fucking flabbergasted like they, they were honestly the air ca- like was sucked out of the room yeah oh and even i and then i because i i cannot give up on a bit like like stood even taller and turned around and walked away because i'm a fu- i mean your dynasty oh. pure dynasty that's what you that's are. what it was that was the <laughs> moment i was creating but as it turned out i really and like i think this guy might have might have been like slightly like on the spectrum oh no so he's an actual actual sensitive person yes <laughs> you really just hit him and i just hit the <laughs> shit out of him and like he had such a strong he's a handsome boy he had such a strong jaw uh-huh you know what i mean <laughs> like that like it wasn't like he didn't have much cheek surface area like this kid had a <laughs> good strong american jaw and i fucking clocked it and yeah did you talk to I him? Do sh- I, I used to hit people all the time, but it was like always fun for me to hit people. Oh, did they find it fun? Or? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think when I wasn't like hormonally, like literally fucked up and yeah. sped up. Mm-hmm. Um, like I see pictures of myself from then, and like I literally have crazy eye. Yeah, <laughs> I actually have crazy eye. 
I accept that that like I was doing a lot of crazy manic shit, mm-hmm. like uh, winding up on weird streets at four in the morning. What does winding up mean? Like as in, you know, I, it would be like dawn and uh-huh. I would find myself on like fucking West 74th Street. It was a v- truly weird chapter. Yeah. I would drink my tits off. Yes. Is there um, sugar in? And it doesn't absorb. The what doodles. Is that? Now is not the time. <laughs> now is not the time for your robot toys. <laughs> Go get it. Oh, it's a beautiful dog. Say th- your dog's name one more time. Doodles. Doodles. <laughs> doodles is a sweet, sweet boy. Thank you. His real name is Handsome, but we call him Doodles because yeah. that is the verb that he is. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I did hit someone. And then. As you know, last night I, I overdrank. Yeah, you did a great job. Thank you so much. I, I m- email, messaged him to confirm, and he was like, oh, shit, I completely forgot. Here's my address. <laughs> yeah, no, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. And then, and then I don't know, I, I, uh, the, the election stuff, the primary stuff, I'm, I, am a, I am a Bernie person. <laughs> if, you, if you do this one more time with the cat, <laughs> if you do this one more time with the cat, do we have to put you somewhere else? doodles so uh i just started drinking yeah and and i was like pills are drinking pills are drinking then i was like i'm recording for comedy central on sunday i'll do drinking (laughs) and uh and then i i just drank everything and then well and then i took a sleeping pill Mm -hmm. and then i don't remember what else i did girls gotta sleep (laughs) it's like okay i've had enough of today (laughs) <laughs> I'm hitting the off switch, which is insane, and I get it. I know, I know, I like right out the gate. I sound like I'm a completely dysfunctional person, but I do things. Yeah, you do. I do things. You have your computer open right now. You saved the day with the SD card. Thank you very much. Yes. Will you, you tell them great. what I did? Yeah, I. Uh, it kept saying card protected. I didn't know what the hell that meant, mm-hmm. and he just, my beautiful Miran just Googled it, figured out there was a switch on Zip the end of the <laughs> SD card. Had no idea. Flicked, flicked the switch. I did. I <laughs> flicked the. S- I flicked the switch. <laughs> and here we are. We're recording today. Otherwise, I would have just been like, "Well, shit, I got to go buy another one." <laughs> <laughs> and then that one would have been protected. Yeah, <laughs> would have been like, "What is happening?" <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, but I, I just woke up to utter chaos and then forgot that we were doing this and you buzz, you were probably in our, in the lobby m- of my building. And I will say, uh, the, on, uh, the, the, on the block I live on, my building is far and away the least maintained. <laughs> like Christian Slater lives across the street. Ooh, that's oh, fun. there's all kind like, there's money up and down the river in yeah. my, I'm in the Upper West Side. Yeah. And my building's lobby is just 100%. It's a crime scene, a hundred percent. There are no cameras if you're trying if you're looking to assault someone or murder them. Our lobby is a perfect <laughs> location for that. It's like removed. It's like steps in. No one will say anything. The guy in apartment two is a dick. He's not going to help you. Um, <laughs> so she, I, so Caitlin was down there for like at least five to ten minutes before. Yeah, I let you just in a, a smidge. And I I messaged you before. I was like, can I get you a coffee or anything? Yeah, you you could have gotten me a coffee. No, I have coffee. I drink my own coffee. <laughs> I mess- well, I I tried. I tried. I know I got you here did. twenty minutes early, and I was like, I'll get him a coffee. I love you good. so much. I, and I even I wasn't sure if your your husband was here, so I was like, no, oh, no, I'll no. Get the husband he gets in later today. Oh, oh, he's fl- he's flying. Yeah. Oh, he's a yeah, and, the, and I only have to close the cellar tonight. So oh, that's it's good. It's nice and easy. <laughs> it's, I so on the weekends I try to book myself a, like less, uh-huh. so that I can like husband down because yes. he's only home for two days a week. Oh, he travels for work. Good. To keep us, yeah, honestly, keep in seafood towers, <laughs> yeah, mommy, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we're pretty close to buying a place. Like that's we're, so exciting. It is actually good. That's wonderful. It is good, and not on my dime, bitch. <laughs> You got that Comedy Central money. Uh, <laughs> like, honestly, it like the the way he, the Noah really does like to live extravagantly. My yeah. partner, he likes a very expensive dinner. Yeah. Right before my surgery, he took me to 11 Madison Park. What's that? It's like it's a restaurant that like you have to like get on a wait. Like you, you most people like are on a wait list to get mm-hmm. in there. Then you pay in advance mm-hmm. and then you go there. And it was. I mean, it, it was something like our our bill for the night was something like thirteen hundred or oh fourteen hundred. But they like they Get it, really Noah. take care of you. Yeah. They really take care of you. They're I mean, it's I I know that sounds like such like a, a fucking privileged thing to say, but it's the kind of thing that like 
if you would like take a vacation to Florida or something, like fuck that, go to Eleven Madison Park. I will never forget that meal. That's not. Yeah. Well, do you? Because <laughs> you drink. Do you uh, get shitty at a place like Eleven Madison Park? Absolutely, and like, <laughs> and it's they are so good at hospitality that like, it's never treated in this sort of otherist or like you're a problem way really like you walk in, like they and i'm sure they can like they 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 know people somehow like they're psychic mm-hmm. they took one look at me and they're like oh he's going to drink everything <laughs> and <laughs> and i did but like i don't know it was very uh they, they never make you feel weird for being who you are if i had showed up there in pajamas they would have been like come on in come on in pjs yeah like look at those bananas hot 100%. pink bananas percent <laughs> and my fucking underwear sticking out of it uh, th- i am <laughs> I, I will be taking a picture of your outfit okay before this. all and right you're holding that's fine fucking <laughs> and holding doodles <laughs> handsome yeah and it's gonna be fun and okay. the kitty cat i want it yeah <laughs> i want it all you want this you yeah want me to do- okay hi <laughs> hi doodles doodles Mwah. So, okay, so where did you grow up? I grew up in Lexington, Massachusetts for the most part. I yeah. mean, I was born in London, and then I went to Iran, and then the Iranian Revolution happened, and then we came to Massachusetts, mm-hmm. to Winchester, Massachusetts, then we went back to Iran f- so my parents could give their marriage one last try during the height of the Iran-Iraq War. They took me to a theocratic, to an Islamic fascist state. <laughs> To for uh, love. In, in the middle of war, <laughs> in the middle of war, so that they could attack each other like cats, <laughs> so they could literally fight like cats, and like I was just, it was the most scarring year and a half of my life. Oh my god! Oh no! Like they bombed my school. Oh my god! My school, which was connected to a hospital, got bombed. I saw a limb. <laughs> I saw a limb. Uh, I Have saw all the ambient you want. Yeah. Oh no, Hooker. <laughs> I'm. Such a trauma baby <laughs> that like I don't even not not for a second do I lament or qualify how much I'm getting fucked up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it is my divine animal right to numb myself out. I am 40 fucking three and you can suck it. <laughs> Everyone can fucking suck it. And it's not like I don't go to therapy. It's not like I haven't tried traditional yeah. roots of healing yes do you know what i mean yes i've done ayahuasca i've seen healers <laughs> i have been i've had hands laid on me i've done group therapy i joined a cult briefly <laughs> i have done fucking everything <laughs> to normal out and if i've settled on rosé then fucking lucky you <laughs> lucky you what was this cult Oh my god! No, I can't even get into the. I, if I if I talk about the cult, p- people will just lose all respect for me. <laughs> I I barely respect. I was twenty three and it was in Florida. Oh, that's young. And Florida, what a hypnotizing place. <laughs> <laughs> I am on Team Iran until I die. So if you're in a cult, <laughs> I'm in a cult. Baby. No, no, no. I mean it. And the thing was that I like completely misused the powers I gained from the cult. Like you were supposed to. It was supposed to make you a more, like authentic person and i just went full phony super drink i wouldn't say full phony because i i haven't been full phony really since i started taking acid when i was 18 okay like i'm a pretty genuine person i think okay. oh yeah wouldn't yeah, you say sure. so yeah there's yeah. a lot of entertainment value and it's <laughs> not do you know what i mean it's certainly not like a hippie yes Tell me more about you know exactly where you stand i know who i am With and i know who Mar- others are yeah <laughs> You see those I, I see crazy people. eyes oh, I see inside people. of my body. Yeah, I see you. I know who you are, and I like you. <laughs> I like, I like you. you. Go team. So you're in Iran. Uh huh. Iran. 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 Yeah. Okay. And um, then when do you come back to? When I am, uh, t- I I was ten, uh, about to turn eleven, and we had to go to Turkey, and I had to do all my own immigration work as a kid. So I had to wake up at like four in the morning to stand in the American embassy line. Oh my God. And then, and you get interviewed by yourself and it's super traumatic. It's like, oh. it's awful. Jeez. Yeah. Like literally getting grilled. Like, why do you want to go to America? Where are your parents? And it's just like, hooker, I'm 10. Yeah. I'm 10. Yes. And Did like, have and I haven't slept. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm a 10 year old with eye bags. Like really, <laughs> really? Like I'm the problem here. <laughs> I'm the proto terrorist, like what? <laughs> and I'm a sissy. <laughs> like it's not even like I was like a big butch ten. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was like I was wearing like blue ankle boots, <laughs> like a peppermint sweater vest. I was like I was presenting as a big sissy. <laughs> Trying to get out of like an Islamic fascist state. <laughs> and the guy was just like, but are you up to no good? It's like, <laughs> what are you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Did you have family in, uh, in America? America? Yeah, yeah, my brothers and mother were here. Oh, well then, yeah. So you just. But I, to... they wouldn't give me papers to get out. Why? Because the wrong Reagan 80s lady? fucking ruined everything. Oh, uh, yeah. And then my mother called Senator Ted Kennedy's office and Ted Kennedy fixed it like literally with a phone call. Wow. How yeah. did that happen just they had rejected both of my passports i had a british passport and an iranian passport mm -hmm. and the my british one got rejected outright because my dad kept coaching me to lie for my interview oh and uh that doesn't seem good it wasn't good <laughs> and uh my dad was an idiot and uh and when he died i felt great i shit you not <laughs> uh i literally like it was just like <gasps> And three and a half a bottles. And then of three rose. and a half bottles of rose. <laughs> later, I'm like looking at pictures of him. I don't remember any of this. <laughs> I don't remember looking that I found like a stack of framed photographs that are not out and about. You will you will notice. <laughs> no. No, they were like in a cubby hole. Yeah. In our office, and I was like, I I don't even I don't remember looking at them. But this morning they were a shock <laughs> to see like dusty frames with fingerprints dragged across <laughs> them, just like lines in the dust where i was like oh mommy's face <laughs> so, you reconnected with what little, am i doing what am i doing i'm too old to live this way my body should be collapsing and yet i feel more alive than ever that's great you're finally out of your sh your I'm shell? finally, yeah, I'm out of my shell. I was yeah. never a Shelly no. kid. No, never I can't kid. imagine. I was Shelly Duvall. If you're wearing a <laughs> pink sweater vest. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was a candy cane baby. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I once, uh, the, I think the only time, and I loved school as a kid, as a kid kid, little mm -hmm. kid. But I think it, like the my first open act of rebellion was my, was when my mother wouldn't let me wear this yellow elephant shirt I had with these red poom poom shorts, <laughs> like red short shorts. And my mother was like, you can't wear that to school. And I was like, well, then I'm not going to school. <laughs> Good for you. That was our first fight. Take a stand. Did you win? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, g I went to school like two hours late in my outfit. <laughs> Of course you did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was getting beaten since the age of three. But that's <laughs> totally separate issue. Totally separate issue. When you're getting the shit kicked out of you by your family, it's the little victories. <laughs> I'm taking a stand with the poom poom shorts. No, I am Daisy duking it today, and you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Hit me again, Ike. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> um, uh, so, okay, so you're in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. When do you leave Massachusetts? Um... For college? Yeah. Is yeah. That, was that in Miami? Uh, no. No, 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 no. College was UMass Amherst. Mm, how was that? Um, were, you a, were you a bad boy yet? No. I, I got there. I mean, I was an eccentric boy. I was a theater boy. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately why I picked UMass, because I wasn't going to spend... Like, I looked at NYU. I looked at the Tisch School, but it was like... Even then, it was like $38,000 yeah. a year. Mm -hmm. And now it's like close to a hundy. Ugh. Like, with how... with I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. So it's like knowing that I, I was I wanted to go into something around entertainment, mm -hmm. the idea of spending yes. like hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that did not make sense yeah. to me. It simply didn't. Smart man. Uh, yeah. So I went state. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of studying and getting down to it, I uh, I took. Oh, my God. I'm I am the worst guest ever. You're doing I have great. a dog who's You're losing it. You're doing a it. great job. You're doing it's a just great I could job. I could I could do better. <laughs> um You're awake and I am thrilled. <laughs> are you sure? I can't believe how much I forgot this. Um so then uh yeah, I went to college and then I was in the honors dorm. Oh, smart boy. Huh? Yeah. The, uh, always. And then uh and then I met these the connecting to the smart dorm mm -hmm. was the hippies and not just any hippies, but hippies who were so delinquent in life that they never filled out their housing forms correctly. So they just ended up in this hall. 
<laughs> so <laughs> the second floor of Grayson was like honors kids mm-hmm. and then literally kids who were so high they didn't even fill out request forms for <laughs> for housing. So I ended up ha- hanging out with these hippies, smoking a bunch of weed, and then came the acid. And acid healed me. Like, it saved my life. Really? 100%. I don't think I've ever heard that before. It's 100% the truth. What happened? Nothing. Ju- well, I mean, the first time I took it, I felt this tremendous, like, self-pity, which I don't think I had ever really sunk my teeth into. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I just saw that I was lying all the time. Like, I was a real compulsive liar, like anything to uh, just keep my spirits up in the yeah. face of, like... It, like uh, By that point, like, wh- in my teens, the, the beatings at home got much worse. Mm-hmm. And uh, by your dad or your mom, my brother, my oldest brother, oh no. who's 10 years older than me. Oh so God. when he was 21, he was kicking the shit out of me at 11. Yikes. Can you imagine? Yeah. And like, no, I can't. we're talking about like multiple black eyes, tooth knocked out, shoved downstairs. Like it was crazy. Oh, my God. And it was mostly because my dad would come to America and be like, the kid's too feminine and you have to toughen him up. Oh. That's not. It was, yeah. So three and a half bottles of wine, two and a half bottles of wine, two and three quarters bottles of wine. <laughs> Who's counting? What am I doing? <laughs> like, what, what am I doing? That's it's the amount of stairs I was shoved down. I'm allowed. <laughs> literally. One, <laughs> one sip for every stair my fucking head hit. <laughs> so, uh, or a hearty gulp. I wouldn't say a sip. Who's <laughs> sipping? <laughs> I'm not dainty about no. my um. That's for uh, d- my know, mood altering. We sip at Madison Avenue. <laughs> we don't. Ev- sip. No, I didn't sip there either. <laughs> at 11 Madison Park, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was living. And then like uh, they, oh my god, they took us on a kitchen tour, and then they brought us more. And I was like, I loved this one course. They brought another one out. Uh, yeah, they hand painted me a water bottle wow. because they knew about my surgery. And so, like, there's, like, a period where you just have to, like, sip water for about, like, fucking a month. That's so nice. I want to go there. It's really special. There were, it, was, it was the most special dining experience of my life. Lovely. Yeah. Um, Let's go back to the trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so then I take a ton of acid. I, like, see that I've been inauthentic and that I haven't been telling – that I'm a liar. Mm-hmm. That, like, I will say things and weave yarns just to make people laugh and to uh, – to to sort of I don't know control how people are seeing me yeah and uh and that was it was a huge awakening and I was like okay I'm never lying again mm-hmm. and yeah. I'm pretty fucking good at not lying no like to the point where I've like kind of lost the ability <laughs> to lie yeah. like I like if I hate someone. Mm-hmm. Ah, like it, it's oh no i've seen it i i've to- i just told someone i hate them yeah i've seen yeah it. yeah we've done a few shows together where you did not care for one of the acts and you made sure to let them know oh whoops <laughs> it was beautiful because they were like okay <laughs> <laughs> they were terrified yeesh but they also still follow me on instagram so i won't say who they that are. guy <laughs> the guy who was who was our host the host for the night when Which we were in oh, Atlantic City? Oh, yeah, that guy, too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, who? That one. who? you told him from the stage. Who did I tell great. I didn't like? Uh, I won't say. Uh, ju- one second. Put the, put the mic in here. Oh, whisper in my ear. Bob the Buddha. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, the twins? Yeah, okay. Yes. The twins. Yes. And I told them. I, I thought. What did I tell them? Ooh. Oh, yeah, no, Handsome's, now he's trying to fuck you. Is he going to try to fuck you? Yeah, he is. Oh, yeah. Get it. Get it, doodles. Oh, my God. Get it, doodles. You're just like your daddy. It's true. The the minute I met Caitlin, I had to fuck her arm. (laughs) Um, Yeah, 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 yeah. There were those twins. Yes. Yeah. And what was I saying? Was I just mad that they were booked at all? You were saying that because they were... What did I say to them? You didn't like the one of their songs about like being brave, and you were like, "People died so that you could talk about being brave." I did that yeah. to them. I was. I, there's no way I said that earnestly. No, but you people <laughs> died so that people. <laughs> well, so you that said you something about like I like you. Were like they were <laughs> awful, and don't get me wrong. And here's the thing: I don't like just tell people. Li- I'm yes, I might. I might actually if if because I had to follow them too, and it was just like, and they had gotten the light, and they were still going and it was like no you don't if you're fucking eating your dick and you got the light quit eating dick yeah get the fuck off the stage yes and uh um 
yeah, no, and I, I was probably incredibly cruel to them. But in them, I saw a work ethic. I think that they, like, take it seriously, probably too seriously. Mm -hmm. And it's entirely possible that in, like, two or three years' time, they will go on to be, like, actually stage-worthy. As of now, they are not. <laughs> they are patently not stage-worthy. cut this whole thing No, out. no, no, no. <laughs> They're, like, don't get me wrong. The spectacle of seeing this sort of genetic anomaly, this freak accident of, of maternity, <laughs> when, when twins come falling out of a woman like a clown car, <laughs> that in and of itself, has, there's some interest there. Mm -hmm. But then when it's unfunny... It's got to go. <laughs> you, they shouldn't be on a main stage. They need to be in the trenches working <laughs> to get better. <laughs> but the spectacle of their, of their uh, freak mutant genes <laughs> is interesting. <laughs> like, would I watch the set? No. Would I buy the calendar? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's very Ben Carson. <laughs> So weird science. <laughs> weird sciences. <laughs> so, um, okay, no. So I mean, <laughs> so you're Massachusetts <laughs> taking acid. Taking acid. But when do you go to Miami? Uh, Miami was I. I so I I end up uh getting social and academic probation in one semester in in uh in college, Your and I got kicked out. One? No, my third well, my third semester. Mm -hmm. Um. I had lied to get uh, off-campus housing, mm -hmm. so I had lied to this gay dean, and I was like, gay dean, uh, my <laughs> partner doesn't feel comfortable in the dorms, and at that point, I had sucked one dick. <laughs> like, I didn't have a partner, uh -huh. right? Like, I had sucked one dick, and one guy picked me up hitchhiking and molested me in a barn. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh... You are a trauma <laughs> baby. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> so then, uh... I'm I'm got I I had this opportunity to live above a frozen yogurt shop in Northampton in mm -hmm. downtown Northampton with three cathedral windows, giant like 14 15 foot ceilings mm -hmm. for 167 bucks oh, a month. Oh my it god. It was cheap as chips. Yes. And I moved in there and one of the roommates was this shitty German guy with a lisp. He's like, "If your kid ends up drinking a bottle of bleach, I want to know that he's going to live because they experimented on bunnies. <laughs> and I was just like, if your kid drinks a bottle of bleach, that's natural selection. You need to keep an eye on your kid. <laughs> uh, and then he, uh, so I got kicked out of there, and then I moved in with these two girls, one of whom had severe anxiety disorder. Uh -huh. And so there were three of us living in a one bedroom. And they were so happy to have, like, this gay muse living with them. Yeah. And I was so happy to not be homeless. Yes. Um, what a trade-off. But then her dad, who was a fire chief, found out that there were three of us living in the apartment mm -hmm. and demanded that I get out of there. Oh. Yeah. Which was his right. He's paying his kid's rent. And he's like, I'm not paying for my kid to run, like, have a... My kid who, like, takes anxiety medication, who is fragile... Yes. You know, okay, to see. like to have this situation. And they wrote my mother and they said that they didn't think I was gay and that they were in love with me. Really? Oh, honey. <laughs> I can't even believe I'm remembering this shit. <laughs> um, and so I had to move back into the dorms at UMass. And they forced me because of the reason I used to get out of the dorms, which was my gayness. Yeah. They made me live in the gay safe dorms. <laughs> <laughs> like an LGBT safe zone. Oh. So, but everyone there was like LGBT safe. And I was like taking acid, <laughs> like fistfuls of acid and like smoking weed and hanging out with all the crazy children and drinking. Mm -hmm. And they were like, drugs are a real problem in the community. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of you. The opposite of me. Yeah. <laughs> and then my roommate fell in love with me. And I was like, I man just, or woman. man, okay. I was like, I just don't have reciprocal feelings uh -huh. for you. And then he went crazy on me, genuinely went crazy, moved into the safe dorm. They're, they had kept one dorm empty in case someone was being like beaten or something on campus uh -huh. as a homosexual, that they would have a place that they could be placed in immediately. He ended up moving into the safe dorm. I didn't realize this, but he had started a campaign of writing me up. 
like anytime anyone saw anything, they wrote me up. This lesbian found a seed in my weed, put it in a plant. That plant was given to the police. Oh my God. So one day I came out of the shower and uh, the, the, I, my only two friends were the two drag queens who lived on the floor. Mm -hmm. And one of these queens is in my room and they were like, Miss Thing, like the head of housing for UMass, 27,000 students, just stopped by your room. <laughs> Says you should go there as soon as possible. <laughs> so I go to their office. I go to this dude's office. And uh, so many years ago, I can't believe I remembered so so clearly. And uh, I, I went in and I let the, the receptionist know that I, you know, I apparently he stopped by my room. Mm -hmm. I guess he wants to see me. She pressed a button. The kid who, was, who he was in a conference with was like basically ejected. He was like, oh, he'll see you right now. <laughs> So I went into the room and there was like a stack, like I would say three inches of pink paper slips. And on top of them, it was like he smoked cigarettes in the dorms. And I saw it and I was like, you know what? You caught me red handed. I smoke butts in the dorms. I blow it out the window. You got me. He's like, oh, no, Mr. Kagani, these are all you. <laughs> all three inches. Every individual sheet was a write up on me. I lived across the hall from an insomniac narcoleptic who several times we found on acid. When we were on acid, she would just fall asleep on the toilet. <laughs> 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 so like several times it would be like, oh, we got her again. <laughs> she get You won't believe who's on the toilet and be like, oh, fucking. And she was an albino. <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> an albino, lesbian, narcoleptic, insomniac. But with her insomnia <laughs> and Combo. and the narcolepsy, <laughs> it was just every awful fucking cunt in the world lived on this floor. <laughs> awful people. Awful fucking people. And two drag queens who are still my fucking friends. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Um and like she weed would help her with the narcolepsy and insomnia. Mm -hmm. So I would every now and again smoke her out. Like yeah. she would come knocking on my door and be like, Is it okay mm -hmm. if I so that ended up becoming its own scandal because I was giving drugs to a mentally ill person, apparently. Oh, God. Like to a person who has actual disorder. Yes. So that, the pot plant to the police. At one point, I knew that there was this one fucking sad garbage fucking fag who was writing me up, and I wrote on the whiteboard outside of his wall, I'm watching you. <laughs> it's got to be terrifying. But again, yeah, I get it. I understand that I'm a chaotic person volatile person you know what i mean it doesn't come from nowhere they started hitting me like real early yeah you know what i mean yeah. i'm doing my best over here yeah <laughs> i'm doing my best were you this tall in college yeah yeah so yeah. i'm watching I, you did, did like you finish growing by 18 <laughs> what a what a honestly what a weird question well i just i'm imagining i like, i hope you get a talk <laughs> show I really do hope you get a talk show, but I'm going to want a doctor on staff to just to like answer certain things for the guest. Be like, yeah, no, people are done growing at 18. Honestly, yeah, no, they're done. They're done. I just can't imagine. Did you take growth hormone at some point after? It's it wouldn't do anything. I'm I'm right here. <laughs> I mean, you're like a it, you're a huge guy. Like you're tall. That's now that's just me. That's just mean. Uh, I'm what well, I'm like six one and a and some change. But to like the you know very and then small. I wear boots and I stand very tall. yes yeah yes you wear your Doc Martens and That's you right. are like six five. I'm very tall. <laughs> That's very true. So I would imagine I'm watching you. I know I'm a scary person. <laughs> That's what I'm. I'm not. I am not oblivious to how I am perceived. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I understand that when I tell someone I'm going to kill them. <laughs> That it may or may not sound hyperbolic. That it might, <laughs> that someone might see that and be like, oh, he's going to kill me. And I might. <laughs> it's like when Louis was like basically confessing to being a weird, a sexual weirdo on stage. Uh -huh. Me being like, I'm a killer. And then one day I kill someone. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> it's the exact same thing, according to the New York Times. Uh, so... <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> so you get out of Amer you get suspension, and then you go to Miami? Uh, no, and then I moved to... Uh, 
the apartment that I lived in with the two girls who wrote my mom. Oh, yes. I sublet their place. Okay. At that point, and then that was when I became a raver, raver. Ooh. Full tilt raver. Like beads and uh, No, pacifiers? like yellow fur coat, skin tight soccer jersey, stovepipe pants, stacks. Ooh. Makeup every day. Oh, the theater department hired me as their chief of hair and makeup. They asked me if I'd ever done makeup before, and I was like, tons of times, I'd never done any. <laughs> Uh, my first show was Our Town with a cast of 70. I had to do 70 people's <laughs> makeup, and that's how you learn. Because <laughs> uh, the first time I put them on stage, like I just basically beat their faces with powder, and they go on stage for the dress rehearsal, and it was ghost town. <laughs> like It was just not one facial feature could be distinguished on that stage. Like You couldn't see anything. And I was like, yeah, I was just sort of playing with it. <laughs> Lies. Uh, but I, that, And then I became a makeup artist for a mm -hmm. minute. And then I moved back to the Boston area and I waited tables and uh, I met a guy Aww. at a at a discotheque Ooh. called Man Ray. It was wow. the best. It was the best club. That is that, in Boston. what a title. Man Ray. Man Ray. Man Ray. And they used to have like Ray. fetish nights and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was like it was it was honestly and I hooked up I so much sex in their toilets. I've had so much <laughs> toilet sex <laughs> at Man Ray. It's gone now, unfortunately. I would still go. Like that's how great yeah. a room it was. And um Man Ray, Man Ray was the dog's bollocks. <laughs> and so Thursday nights was campus. And uh <laughs> and I would go there and be like, Who am I fucking? <laughs> Who am I fucking? And I would drink the fucking house down. And then uh, one, I mean, so many ridiculous Man Ray sex stories of Please drunk and one. debauchery. Give me one, go one I, good one. There was, there was a time where uh, there was a guy who was like really aggressively pursuing me all night. And, uh, and I would just like make out with like seven people, like coronavirus, my God, if that <laughs> was around. I would, patient zero, Gwyneth Paltrow, contagion. Uh, so I, I was like making out with like a lot of people, but this one guy really thought that like we had something special going on. Oh. And, uh, and then this like Frankenstein hairdresser slammed me against a wall and like really started giving it to me. And I was like, he wins. <laughs> uh, and I went outside and he was like, wait to me. He was like, calling out to me from the door and then he lost consciousness oh. and then i was like i forgot my coat and i like jumped over him to go back <laughs> into i literally walked over an unconscious person to get like it was a mess and so one night there was this like older italian man sitting on the stoop outside of the club he, mm -hmm. he bummed a camel light off me i rode him home on my bike Aww. on the back of my bike and is he, this a bike bike or a, a motorcycle a bicycle okay to my apartment that was like eight or ten blocks away mm -hmm. and then we bang he has it's to date the largest penis i've ever <laughs> i've ever been like just it, he we did everything with that dick um <laughs> we did everything scarf? with it we did <laughs> we put up shelves <laughs> <laughs> like looked we at old pictures of my family <laughs> literally we did everything <laughs> made coffee <laughs> um <laughs> And uh, and then he would lived in Miami, mm -hmm. and he was like, "You've got to come to Miami. I have this TV show. I own a hair salon. I, you know, I've got all this stuff going on. Come to Miami. We'll make it happen for you. You'll fucking blow up there." And I was like, "The dick's good." He like kept trying. He was like, I'm, "He was trying to marry me." I was like, "I'm gonna fucking let it roll. I'm gonna roll the dice, and I'm gonna go." And I packed all my shit into a truck. Uh, literally, as I pulled out of Cambridge, I like tore the side off of a building. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not a safe driver. Uh, and then <laughs> drove down to Miami with him. And then on the like on the truck ride there, he had like a totally different side of him came out, uh -oh. where he was like nitpicking my personality all the time Ooh. and like getting meaner and meaner. And then we got there, and it turns out he didn't own a salon. He worked at a salon and got promptly fired oh. the tv show was canceled and it was like a local access show <laughs> like and everybody thought of this guy as like a total shit show and how then and he got super mean with me how long did you know him before you moved to miami like a month and a half 
Yeah. I was young. Of course. And crazy. No, no, and, no. But, and, I, and even though we broke up after I got to Miami, I stayed in Miami. Like, yeah. I loved. I still love you Miami. You talk about Miami with the fondness of South a, Beach is my favorite of a place human of their the favorite child. World. And I love <laughs> yeah. it because it's like, it's, it's like Prince and Popper are all getting shit-faced at the same places. Mm-hmm. You know, like the poor and the rich are totally rubbing noses. Nobody knows who's got what. Yeah. And, uh, and it really, like, I love a dive bar. Yeah. And South Beach is, in a sense, basically one giant dive bar. Like, even the fancy places are dive bars. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, you're paying $24 for a martini, still a dive bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I love that energy. And I used to love, like, that I could, like, have a bottle of wine with lunch and then jump in the ocean and be like, let's do more. <laughs> let's do more fun things. And I never, I, Coke was never really my thing, so I didn't get, like, lost in that. Yeah. Yeah. So you, how old were you in Miami? 23. 20, oh my oh, God. Oh, beautiful. I can show you a picture. A friend Please. of mine just sent it. Oh, gosh. A friend of mine from Miami just sent me a picture of like back in the day. And, and so were you doing still acid and. Uh, like I that, th- there's less drinking? acid there. I mean, yeah. I'm certainly ecstasy hooker. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> ooh I was on so much MDMA. <laughs> ooh. Um,. So that's us back in the day, just like a weird picture. That's you. That's me. Oh my god! Hello. Ah, starving. Look at that bone starving. structure. Starving. I was like, I weighed. You, you were know, king of the rock in I Miami. I was very pretty. Yes. Very. So I could fuck whatever I wanted to. Yes. Like I literally brought home a green beret whose mi- other military boyfriend like wanted to fight me, and I was like, "You want to fight me?" Like, <laughs> I was a terrifying. Like it was a very macho chapter of my life. Uh huh. There, I can't believe I'm not HIV positive. Mm. I can't believe it. Yeah. Um. God was looking for you. I did a lot of weird <laughs> shit. I'll tell you <laughs> one one time, and I drank. So I was a featured drinking bartender uh-huh. at this at this bar called the Liquor Lounge, and the the gig was that if anybody in the bar did a shot, me and my fellow bartender would take a shot. Mm-hmm. Anyone in the bar <laughs> took a shot. We did a shot with them. Oh, my God. So me and this girl, who I'll keep her name out, but she was uh, this Australian girl who used to be a prostitute in Australia. She taught me how to drink. Yeah. And was like, the trick is, Moran, you got to eat. <laughs> and then I would sit her and I would watch her, like, hate eat a Cuban sandwich. And I was like, wow, like. I've never hate eaten anything. I love food. Yeah. And she was like, wait till the body changes. <laughs> and then uh and then uh we would drink crazy yeah. four nights a week. Mm-hmm. And uh and th- at that point I was like I was basically running on vodka. My entire like I I like if I would get the shakes if really? I took a day off. Mm-hmm. I would literally just sit in the bathtub. I would order two large cheese pizzas. I would set them up next to the tub. I would sit in the tub and shake and eat the pizzas and listen to Stevie Nicks' Trouble in Shangri-La. Very gay. <laughs> so um, so the, I, I, AOL was the thing, was yes. like the chat platform. And so I would have anonymous sex with dudes that I would find from chat rooms. Every night of the week? Whenever I wanted to. Wow. Sometimes a c- few times a day. Look at you. And I mean, with that those cheekbones. Ah! I can't ah, blame yeah. you. My, there was no pubic fat to m- muss and fuss with. I was very lean. <laughs> <laughs> and very, then, uh, lean. very lean. Uh, uh, there was this one guy who ended up sending me a picture of him in front of like a, a ship's wheel. And I was like, oh, I've got to fuck the captain. <laughs> like, it just looked so weird. So I biked like 200 blocks to his house. <laughs> shit faced like completely blackout drug shit faced and then i got to his house and he was like oh you have a hairy ass that's not gonna work and so i was like all right go ahead and then i went into like downward dog pose on his bed and he brought out like a bucket and a disposable razor (laughs) and started shaving my ass i fell asleep face down ass up (laughs) woke up didn't know where i was and had one shaved butt cheek. <laughs> 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 and then went to the Aventura Mall, like with my StarTac cellular phone, my flip phone, being like, and just calling friends and being like, girl. <laughs> 
well, <laughs> I got one shaved butt cheek <laughs> w- from fucking the captain. <laughs> like it was a mess, a mess. Favorite. Like what? How couldn't I love Miami? Like how is that not the best chapter of a person's life? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's I have so many stories like that. Really? Of like weird sex. Oh, my God. I could feel I, we could do three hours of this weird sex. What, what weird drunk sex. Yeah. What jumps to mind? Uh, there are two yeah. right now. One, there was this bar called Crowbar. And then if you're a local in Miami, at least back in the day, the way it was, is that bec- especially as like someone who bartended mm-hmm. like we all we didn't pay for drinks at each other's joints. Yeah. You know, we just tipped each other real hard. Yes. And we and if you're a local, you don't pay. You don't have to pay to get into a club. Yeah, you just go to the doorman. Mm-hmm. He's like right this way, you know, like in you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, the hottest club was like crowbars on Thursdays, and I would I would go there and I would get fucking ham boned. And I remember there was this like one night where like I was just making out with every straight guy in the room, <laughs> and it was just like I was like dancing, make out with him, move on make out with another guy and they were all pissed at me (laughs) anyone who i had been making out with who i left to make out with someone new pissed yeah end of the night i'm blind drunk Mm -hmm. and this kid goes you got to drive me home and throws me his keys i'm like i can't see a straight line (laughs) oh no like do you see my eyes like literally like (laughs) vibrating (laughs) do you know what i mean like i could be having a Low grade seizure right now. <laughs> you also and not know. <laughs> not <laughs> not drunk. You've already hit like. Oh, and I'm a very bad driver. Also, <laughs> let's say I've I've torn I have torn buildings in half and kept going. <laughs> <laughs> but here, yeah, no, I'll take this. Yeah, sure. And then I was like, <laughs> "Fuck it, let's fuck. That's fun." Uh, and I thought he was the hottest one. I thought I had been upgrading throughout the night. Yeah. <laughs> we get to his apartment. He takes all the cushions off of his couch and lays them on the floor so that we can, like, go crazy. (laughs) I strip nude, once again, fall asleep right there. (laughs) Pass out. Pass out drunk, on his floor, no sex. (laughs) I wake up to the sound of breakfast being cooked by his mother. Oh, no. And I am nude (laughs) in in their living room. And then he comes out, and he is—he's actually—he's a—he's a three. <laughs> He's—he is a bona fide three. He is a very unattractive man. <laughs> and he's like, "Mom, is it okay if we use your bed?" <gasps> she says, "Yeah, go ahead." She gives me a bologna sandwich, and a Kool Aid. <laughs> and then I go into the bedroom where there's like PBS, like on a scrambled television, <laughs> next to the bed. And crosses everywhere and a picture of his martyr dead brother, his <laughs> dead soldier brother. Oh He's like, go slow. <laughs> I horsed it in him. <laughs> I did. I absolutely did not go slow. <laughs> Banged him mercilessly and got the fuck out of there. <laughs> the fuck on out of there. So that one I remember. <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> The uh, mother was just like... Just there. And I was like, yep, great, super. No, we're not talking about this. This never happened. Well, a bologna sandwich, that's so nice. Yeah. How cordial. It, I, I, what a supportive mother. She was. And she, no, go ahead. Fuck on my bed. By the way, don't mind the pictures of my dead son everywhere. <laughs> also the crosses. Also, Kool-Aid. <laughs> what does she like? Is she listening? And, I, and during this whole thing, by the way, I've slept two hours and I'm dying hungover. Like, yeah. it's just, what a mess. <laughs> I love these things, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. love them. I mean, it's a beautiful story. Thank you. I mean, You're a beautiful story. I feel story. like you've brought a family together. Mm. I mean, you really <laughs> helped them connect. I feel so badly. And if he hears this and, and recognizes himself in it, I hope he knows he's a three. <laughs> <laughs> T- if he takes away anything, yeah. he's a three. Yeah, he's a three. Thanks for the sandwich. That's it is what it is. <laughs> what was the other one? Oh, um, so I I eventually end up managing a bar called Free Spirits, which had half a toilet. Did you work at every single bar in I've Miami? I've been fired 43 times <laughs> in my life. Oh, my God. I've been fired 43 times. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Now you found comedy, the one thing you cannot get fired and from. And yet. And yet, 
<laughs> hang it on you by you a know, thread. You know? <laughs> like when you tell the owner of a club that it's just, why are you doing this? Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> they don't book you as much. No. <laughs> and I then, and then, and I then you just don't. <laughs> why are you cutting it out? Because I, I said it. You didn't say it. No, I didn't. No, you're, I know you're, you're a good, polite girl. I'm a very nice Italian lady. I know you are. I know <laughs> you are. I'd give you the bologna sandwich. I know you would. <laughs> yeah, oh, by all means, nude. <laughs> um, okay, so half a toilet. And with like her stripped couch. So <laughs> this place had half a toilet. No one would come in there. I remember there was this like a, and we would just drink all mm-hmm. day. And this, uh, this, th- I remember one time a guy came in. He was like, do you guys mind if I make myself comfortable? I'm from New Orleans. And we were like, no, go ahead. Go do your thing. And we turn around and he's naked except for a pair of red fishnets that he's like <laughs> wrapped around his cock and balls. And it was like, oh, okay, not that comfortable. <laughs> and also that doesn't look comfortable. No. Like, that looks that looks restrictive. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one night this guy comes in with, and I, you're not gonna like it, but a tranny hooker. <laughs> you know, nobody. You're not supposed to say tranny. It, this wasn't a trans issue. This is a tranny hooker, a Thai tranny hooker, who's like, oh yeah, daddy, we're having a great time, daddy. Yeah, daddy. <laughs> And they're both like doing blow and he's just like throwing money to get them both very drunk. Mm -hmm. And then like at some point in the like split second where we took our eyes off them because you couldn't take your eyes off them. She stole his wallet, (gasps) took his the the wallet and the drugs and fucking disappeared. Wow. So he was alone and was like, what am I going to do? What am I gonna do? And I was like, I'll I'll figure out a way to get you home. Mm-hmm. He's like, we gotta take my car. We gotta take my car. And I was like, oh fuck. I mean, it's not the fucking first time I've been uh, driven drunk. <laughs> so I, we go and he. I find him literally trying to stick his keys into the wrong car for oh about no. fifteen minutes. I'm like, I can't have this. Also, as a manager, yes. I can't have this guy leave my. You were a manager. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Of a bar with half a toilet. Like, literally, <laughs> a jagged toilet <laughs> with no water in it. It was like, do you, can you imagine? All right. <laughs> so, I was like, okay, I'm, I'll take this guy home. And I, I'm like, give me your keys. And then I press the boop, boop. And I find his car immediately. He, <laughs> he didn't think to do that. <laughs> we get into his Mercedes van. It's a very expensive car. He tells me he lives in the... In in South Beach on First Street, mm-hmm. there's this we call it the Jetsons Tower. It's this like big orange that looks like the Jetsons building. Okay, tower. Ooh, that's fun. It was fun. So I drove him back to his place. We get there, and w- at this point, we're just making out like dogs <laughs> in the elevator, scaring all the other rich people in the elevator. And he's like, like really. <laughs> Does he still have the thing around his cock and balls? No, no, no. This isn't the New Orleans guy. This is another guy. This is oh. a, this is a whole other guy with another prostitute. Oh. I see, I see, I see. He's like, mm, we're like making out like dogs. I, I'm like, all right, we'll bang. I'll bang this guy. He's fucking, he was, you know, he had this sort of like Bruce Willis quality. <laughs> Brucey Bruce. Brucey, juicy Brucey. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Now I got a machine gun. <laughs> and I'm Sybil Shepherd. <laughs> and so I, I get him to his door, uh, enter the key, open it, because again, he's not doing great with keys. Mm-hmm. I walk in and like w- I, I like confidently stroll into his apartment and I look to my right and there's a report card on the marble counter and his wife is sitting on the couch and there are pictures of their daughters <gasps> all over the place. And the wife palms me a 20 and is like, thanks for getting him home. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit, weird. Oh. Holy shit. But there are so many sexual, like, ridiculous sex stories like that. Really? Drunk and fucked up ridiculous sex stories. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. So many. Hundreds. Oh. oh, my God. Hundreds. I do a thing called resume sex where I have to, like, if if the story is funny enough, I'll bang. <laughs> Like if I get to, if I come out of it with a story, I will I will offer up my body. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Was that so that was all your time in Miami, just 
mm-hmm. resume sex. <laughs> just doing weird resume sex. Mm-hmm. The fight with the Green Beret on 15th and Washington was, I mean, it will not soon be forgotten. What was the fight about? It was, there was, like, because they were dating, but yes. both closeted. Okay. And they thought that they had something special together. And then I took the Green Beret back home, and he had me wrap myself around him while he did push-ups off of my bathroom, off the lip of the door. Oh, my the God. Door. Good for you. The party, man. I we had mean. some. I've I've had a good. You climbed that tree. Fun. <laughs> lo- oh, <laughs> he wasn't that tall either. No. No, and I honestly, I should have, I should have banged the one who I got into the fight with. Really? Yeah. Was it like an actual fist fight? Uh, no. I just scared him. I, I. You scared a green beret? I, I scared a soldier. The green beret I took home. <laughs> Cause I have a daddy thing. Yeah. Uh, it could have to do with the fact that I grew up without a father. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just putting two and two together. Yeah. How how interesting. <laughs> so uh yeah, I I uh a lot of sex with dads. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy sex. I love daddy sex. Yeah, you're replacing the void. Literally. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean like did I want to bang my dad? He was very stout. My my dad he was beautiful when he was younger, but short, which I don't do. And it's not because I there's anything wrong with short mm-hmm. men. I just happen to be very tall. Yes. And it, and it feels weird ever letting myself be submissive to someone who I could throw. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. 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 I get that. Yeah. That's but that's what you know. You learned that about yourself. That's beautiful. That's absolutely correct, Caitlin. Mm-hmm. It's about knowing yourself <laughs> so that you can live in accordance with your values that's beautiful right that's beautiful thank you you're beautiful okay so miami happens and then you go to and then i i just can't tell if like i've talked so goddamn much no, you're perfect all right yeah you're doing great well oh. prob- we, yeah well, we're i don't mind okay i don't mind <laughs> uh so then miami <laughs> i leave miami i live in new york briefly okay and new york literally just ate all of my money and then spat me out yeah so where did you go after that I lived in Bay Ridge, New York, and then I went back to Miami. Oh. And then my brother started making babies. And the one that used to beat you up? Both of them. Oh. Yeah. Including the one that, yeah. Are you still close person. with him? Oh, no. I'm, not, I'm not really close with my family. Like, mm-hmm. when you realize that, uh, that they, like, scapegoated me and they all just were, like, if they didn't, everyone at some point participated in beating me, but, like, uh, they also just went. The, my oldest brother definitely took it the furthest, and mm-hmm. they just let it happen. Yeah. And I don't. I. I. I have a hard time forgiving them. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a that. lot of trauma. And they don't acknowledge that it happened. Really. Yeah. They can't even see the error. Like no, no, no. They like they. They're like that didn't happen. It's oh. it's a form of gaslighting and it's super common and what I just learned about is this thing called family scapegoat syndrome where like literally if you try to bring it up years later that they like rebond and attack you and it's like note for note what's what's oh. happened. Yeah. That's Yeah. Thinks. So I don't have a very strong or or intimate or trusting relationship with these people. No. No. No, I can't imagine yeah. you would. Yeah. No. But you got handsome. I've got handsome and I've got a lot of daddy dick in this old memory bank. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> You sure do. Um, yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I, part of what I think I represent as a person is that you can have like a a pretty fucking awful beginning and still have a colorful, hysterical yes life. I would say that you is know, and it's with eyes wide open. It's not like, and also you can have like a a range of substance abuse problems, and also like, you know, so long as you you plan it accor- like correctly. On mm-hmm. your calendar, you can still you can still do other shit. You yeah. can still do something and create something. Yeah, you're it's still a good thing. you're still magic. You are. No, you are. No, we had a pretty magical weekend in Atlantic, Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Yeah, and that seems like it was just a that was also during like in and around the surgery. So really? I was also crazy. Yeah, that was a crazy time. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was. I mean, it was. Or was that right before my surgery? It was when did we do that? The sunshine of my life. When did we do it? When was that? <laughs> I couldn't tell. I think it was over a year ago. Yeah, and then there was that one show where I absolutely had too much to drink before the show, Uh and then it was like a bunch of Trump bachelorette parties. Yes, yes, and and they were loud and obnoxious. Yeah, and I just and I laid down on the stage, which drove you nuts. I laid down on the stage. Yes. Yeah. And you described the disco ball. Yep. I was like, "Oh, you want to waste my time? I can waste your time." And then you brought me back on stage and made me sing. 
I don't remember that. I do remember that <laughs> now. Now I remember that. Now I remember that. <laughs> and then we went back to our hotel room. We took our little like uh um bed skirts. Bed skirts that like surely were were infested with a uh, with lice. Mm-hmm. Wrapped them around our heads like turbans <laughs> and then went back to the casino floor to play video poker. <laughs> we did. And we uh, and we drank a lot more beer and we played video poker. Yeah, we I did. have a video of you. I, which I, I, you, I made you swear you'd fucking hello delete it. Hello to my sweet boyfriend. I do love your sweet boyfriend, <laughs> though. I do. I love him. I love him. We should double date. That's not a joke. Yeah. I think you would love it. Like, Noah is a doll. Yes. And with a couple glasses of wine in him, he's so much funnier than me. <laughs> I doubt that. I'm not even kidding. Yeah? This hooker is so fucking funny sometimes. Look at your outfit. <laughs> This is his sweatshirt. He bought it in B-Town. I was like, you are so basic. He was like, sue me. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, there's a lot of drinking. A lot of... uh, I have injured myself so many times. I was hit by six cars (laughs) drinking and biking. Six cars. And what was amazing, there was this one time I was I was in Cambridge and there was at, in right near MIT, there used to be this gas station mm-hmm. at a fork in the road. OK. And people would just use the gas station to do to bang Yui's. Yeah. Like with abandon. So I was riding by the gas station and some guy like doing a, like a spontaneous Yui hit the shit out of me, <laughs> hit the shit out of me. And for some reason, instead of being like what the fuck? I got up and I was like, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Because when you're drunk, your bones are jello. Yeah, a little bit. And like, I also, I don't know why it was like my pride was damaged. <laughs> and I was biking away from the least proud bar in Boston, the Paradise, also known as the Dirty Dice, Ooh. where now, they, they, now they're closed. But then for a while, they had like a Saturday Night Fever staged with the lights on the floor Ooh, fun but when i used to go there when i first used to go there like starting at age 19 <laughs> uh like it, it was the most sleazy disgusting cruisy bar they would put like some uh particle board on a pool table uh-huh. and then like a 16 year old boy in a news like in a reflective construction vest uh-huh. would come out and just sort of like limply dance <laughs> and like just sort of shuffle and look uh, bewildered and, and, you know, pretty sad. <laughs> and then, like, very old men would be like, here's a dollar. <laughs> it was the most disgusting bar. So I was biking away from the Dirty Dice, going to my friend Claire's house in summer. Actually, I, I think I was trying to bike back to my family's house in Lexington. Mm. I would do that. That's yeah. why I was in such great shape. I would bike yeah. everywhere. I would, anywhere I wanted to go, I would bike. And then I got hit by a car real bad. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to make it to Lexington. I should go to Somerville and visit and go to my friend Claire's house. I, I was literally leaving a trail of blood behind me. Oh God. I was just bleeding because also alcohol is a blood thinner. Oh, so no, when you yeah. start bleeding on the booze, there's no stopping it. So <laughs> it was just, I'm just bleeding. And like, I can only bike with one of my legs yeah, because the other leg was dead. No good. <laughs> And then I get to Somerville, and I'm like, oh, my God, I made it. Biking with one leg at night, like, injured. And I threw my head down as I let my bike glide onto the sidewalk. For too long, I hit a spiked fence with my bike. I fly off my bike and (laughs) land and impale myself on the spikes. Brand new injury. (laughs) I walk into Claire's apartment, and I was like, Claire, honey, I've, I've got to crash her. She's like, what the <laughs> fuck happened to you? I was like, it'll be fine. Just go back to bed. I got this. <laughs> I dropped a mattress in their kitchen and fell asleep nude, and I don't know why this is the case, <laughs> but with one leg s- straight up in the air. <laughs> so that the blood wouldn't... So you wouldn't lose a limb. Maybe. You're maybe, so maybe it was. Maybe it was a... a like some kind of armchair medical protocol that I was... You probably learned it back in the days when your <laughs> school was attached to the hospital. Don't remember. <laughs> Don't remember. Why? Why was I doing that? <laughs> Just one leg straight <laughs> up in the air. <laughs> I, there's a lot of stories like this, of like <laughs> self-harm, injury, <laughs> sex, real weird compromising sex, and a lot of it drunk. Yeah. Yeah. 
So how is your relationship to drinking now? Do you still do that stuff? Or is do it I still go totally apeshit? Well, when I after the surgery and I started to go really crazy, at one point I yelled at a at a comedy executive. Really? Yeah, he was looking at me funny, <laughs> and I was just like, "Fuck you, gatekeeper." <laughs> oh. Um. So. But uh, in terms of like. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, it's honestly I like. It's not that I, I don't think I get into like that kind of weird scenario anymore. Mm-hmm. No. Also, it's like I'm just not in like everyone wants to fuck me shape. Yes. You I know mean, what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like when you're young, it's like that. Invisible everyone wanted to fuck me. Yeah. and My hormones were like fu- you could feel them. Yes. Like if I was at the party, you knew. Yeah. If I was upstairs in a back room, you could feel it. Like you I was very uh, present. You're very and sexually sh- present. Strong pheromones. You know, I have strong fer- are you yeah. saying I smell? Fe- no, pheromones. Pheromones are like um, attractability. It's like a moth to a flame. It, no, they're literally, but it's an olfactory sense that picks up on pheromones. Mm-hmm. So, it's yeah, I think that's why it, people come to you. It's just like they flock <coughs> because you have these strong pheromones. <laughs> so it's very attractive. It doesn't happen as much anymore. And it's a subconscious. It, do- it really doesn't happen as much anymore. No? Pe- no, now people think I'm really nice. <laughs> Oh my god, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> it happens th- like I mean like strangers. Okay. Who, like if I'm in a pharmacy for some re- <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> who knows? If I'm in a pharmacy, uh like I'll make friends with everyone in the room mm-hmm. very accidentally. Mm-hmm. And like attention it, like it might seem like I'm always like begging for attention, but it's literally it's it's just an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> I've never been able to control the amplitude of my aura. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's definitely an aura. Mm. I would say your color is hot pink. You it's mean like, like my <laughs> banana shorts? <laughs> like your banana <laughs> <laughs> Those look like swimsuits. It like is a swimsuit. <laughs> and this is what I apparently went to bed in. And I don't know why, because they were both in the drawer. I remember <laughs> folding these and putting them away yesterday mm-hmm. so that... I was like, I need to change my outfit. <laughs> Which I'm, makes me afraid that I went out. I don't think you went out. I don't know that I didn't. <laughs> the low Ambien. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do the worst things on Ambien. What have you done on Ambien? Uh, a lot of like just random like I've I have cussed people out on Ambien. It's r- depending on like which Mehran is driving the bus. <laughs> Once the Ambien kicks in, there's like this I would say 15 minute window where it, like if I've been drinking and mm-hmm. then I take Ambien. Like you know about the time when I drank and took Ambien and fell out of my loft bed and broke my nose and that's why this is not my nose. What? No. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, this isn't my nose. Can you sue Ambien? Why would I sue Ambien? <laughs> They're my favorite. Be- I'll g- I would die without them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not suing Ambien. Doodles? No eating oodles. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> so- <laughs> doodles, no eating oodles. Yeah. What a beautiful. He's my baby. You could say that about Meron. Yeah, Meron. Don't e- fucking don't eat Meron. <laughs> don't eat Meron. Don't eat Meron. <laughs> well, no, it sounds like I'm like committing self abuse, and I'm not. No, you seem no, very I happy. No, I really like the way alcohol feels. Mm-hmm. I um, I don't, I I, uh, I don't really use alcohol. I may I. Uh, there was a time when I would say that I never, I never used alcohol to cope, but I think sometimes I do use alcohol to cope. Mm-hmm. Like yesterday, I was just like, Ugh! all of this election shit. Yes. I was really upset. I was yes. super annoyed. Uh, you drink to cope. Uh, th- last night I drank to cope. You drink. Last to cope. night I did. Yeah. yeah. But do you also egg yourself on like you're watching the news on repeat to get yourself all revved up? Mm. No. I don't do that. But I do look at what people write on social media, and that Ah. will make me insane. Yes. Social media is almost Twitter in particular. And well, it's it's algorithmically designed. Yeah. Like they know know the things Mm -hmm. that I care about. And so they're going to show me things that piss me off because pissed off, it prolongs engagement. Yes. And the longer you are engaged on their website, the more content you generate for them, the more popular there are, the more their ad space is worth. Mm hmm. And so I'm not oblivious to that, that I'm just blatantly being manipulated. But then when you're on the Ambien. I 
Mm. And you feel all ooby shooby. It feels so good. It feels so good. Do you ever ambient? No, I've never ambient. It's honestly. I it's mean. It is. It's it's literally like returning to your mother's bosom. Ooh. Every night. Louise would hate that. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 honestly like it's just it's a couple seconds of bliss and then sweet release. Um. Oh, unconsciousness. <laughs> It's so nice. My boyfriend got me a weighted blanket. How is that? It's. Uh, uh, do you know I'm considering it? It's heavy. That's it. Yeah. Do you sweat in it? I sweat last night. Yeah. I had to, I had to do one leg in, one leg out. Yeah. Uh, and I kept waking up because I had to pee. Sure, sure, sure. Because it's pushing on your bladder. Yeah. And I had two glasses of wine last night. Uh, just, and so just the two. Just the two. I'm just the I'm two. Getting it under what control. is that like? That is. What's I it mean, like to have a half a bottle? I literally sat there and we were at this wine bar uh-huh. and uh, we were eating cheese. Uh-huh. And I had two glasses of wine and I was like, I should get a third. And then I was like, if I get a third, I'm going to be drunk. <laughs> well, yeah. And I look at my boyfriend and he's not, he's on like some uh, ulcer medication, so he can't drink. So I was like, so I'm just going to drink. <laughs> For everyone. <laughs> For everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we got to go. <laughs> we were the only two people in this, like, lounge, like, this wine bar lounge yeah. in Astoria. Yeah. And there were the three very obnoxious, loud women right behind us. And I was like, we got to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one more glass of wine. I might to wrestle them. <laughs> that's, that's, that's real. That's real. Mm-hmm. That's real. Identifying when you're, like, going to cross over mm-hmm. and getting out of there before that happens. Not the worst move. No. No, it felt I, good. I, I, I should probably... <laughs> <laughs> do that more. Yeah, but you were in a safe space last night. Safe space. Last night, safe space, which I made unsafe. Like, I brought out hardware and tools. <laughs> and I don't remember doing this. I woke up to hardware and tools. <laughs> You're ambitious. Ev- all of Handsome's toys were everywhere. <laughs> and I don't know whether I should blame him or myself. Isn't he the sweetest? He is the sweetest. He probably helped a little bit. He was your Edgar honor. He, br- he, oh well, you know, he's he sees me scream. A t- I I do a lot of screaming. <laughs> I scream a lot. Sounds like you're a good neighbor. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> neighbors actually li- do like me. <laughs> I think they do. You're hard not to love. Is that true? That is true. God damn it. You're yeah. But we've covered so many ways in which I am. I know, which is why it's so baffling. But you're just so <laughs> easy to love. As if people should hate me. You would, like, on paper. Yeah. The way that you would just slap yeah. comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, ju- you scream at people. Yeah. You know, you go online on these tirades. Yeah. You would, you know, it would be like, oh, but people love you. Like, it's it's an honesty about you. There is honesty about Yes, me. and it's so respectable. And then you're also funny and you're charming and you're very, um, like, supportive and warm. When it's necessary, you don't do it all the time, and I don't know? give it to just anyone. And you don't get, and so it's just very like people know that there's this honesty, sincerity about you. That's and I think very kind. That's what it is. I think it's like you're, yeah, you're a little batshit. That's but exceedingly it's beautiful. Kind. <laughs> that is exceedingly <laughs> kind because it is pure you. It is me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can, I think I can, I can cop to that. Yeah, that's me. It's wonderful. Thank you. You're yeah. wonderful. Oh, I mean, I think that's how many where minutes we did end. we do. I mean, I think we did an hour, which is Sweet. perfect. Yeah, that's oh, great. Oh, w- uh, and then everything you have to cut. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to leave the thing in about the twins? Yeah. You are. You didn't say their name. That's fine. Which okay. is great, because I think you were so drunk you won't remember their name. <laughs> I'm not drunk now. <laughs> well, at the time when you yelled at them. I or was so drunk then? You were, it was like at the end of the second show. And okay. you were like, this is, we've done it. Whew. You did great, though. You were right. You You're were great. great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Where can people find you? Do you want people to find you? No. <laughs> okay. No, I don't <laughs> well do that. I don't get found. Ron Pagani. No, The Mehran mm. on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Mehran X on Twitter, because I'm really good at branding. Yes. Uh, Very no, good. They, they don't land on one. Th- I, if, if I was good at branding, they'd all be the same. Yeah. But I can't do that, can I? Well, I'm all the same, and I have four followers so don't worry about it oh i'm also low on followers and i think i lost a few in the last 24 hours for for sure good for you oh i have been a toxic mess lately they'll be back like people are like sounds like you know the way you talk now it sounds like you should be on the trump train i'm like first up on the trump train your mom's loose coos (laughs) your mommy's loose coos it was like honestly what's wrong with me why why can't i just be a person 
You are a loves, person. You know, but who loves and, you know, c- because I think I am a good person. You saw a limb when you were 10. I'd nine, take it easy nine, on yourself. Nine, nine, <laughs> nine. The limb was at nine. The limb was at nine. Yeah. And uh, the mother wailing. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. take it easy. I feel the same way. You're doing great. Thanks, doll. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for doing the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry I left you in that nightmare basement. You're perfect. I love you. <laughs> Good time, girl.